Roll call to order today is Thursday, March 30th, 9.04 a.m. My name is Brennan Kelsey, along with me is Michelle Renatza. Mr. Alvin Roche will be a pro panel. They have to support a seat at the DOC headquarters in Baton Rouge. Our remote location is Louisiana State Penitentiary with staff and support there. Please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Ward Rochelle Ambo. Reginald Labrador Classification. And Cavalier Offender Records. I'm Cindy Moses, Social Worker One. Um, Kenyatta Quayborn, Social Service Counselor. Charlton Dixon, Social Service Counselor. All right, we're ready for our first case. Please, please introduce yourself, state your name, and DOC number for the record. Everett Arsenal, 13 on 177. All right, Everett, you heard the introduction. We'll be your parole panel. We'll ask you some questions. You can respond at the end. You can make a statement. We'll take a vote. I see you have staff behind you. We'll let them speak as well. Talk to us, okay? Okay. All right. Uh, Everett Osterman, DOC number 130177. You're a fifth class offender. Parole eligibility date 10 23 2023. Good time date 7 8 2024. Full term date 1 24 2029 of a seven year sentence for theft. Does that sound correct? Yes, sir. Okay, would you answer Mr. Roche's questions, please? Yes, sir. Good morning, Mr. Alderman. How are you? Good morning. Fine. How are you? Mr. Alderman, are you uh, 52 years old? Pardon me? Are you 52 years old? Yes, sir. And you are a fifth felony offender. You've been convicted of five felonies. Yes, sir. And My last been, conviction brought it been, up to five. And you've been arrested over 20 or 25 times. Is that yes. correct? Yes, sir. And you have a good time date in July of 2024, next year. Yes, sir. And I see where you not explaining any good time. Have you taken any program? Yes, sir. I took a uh, pre-release, um, 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 thanking for a change, substance abuse, and uh, money management, and pre-release at Lafouche Parish Detention Center in 2021 before I was released in uh, January of 2022 by mistake. And they released me by mistake, and five days later, they picked me up, so I wouldn't have awarded the good time. Okay. okay. So tell me what your job assignment is at uh, Louisiana State Penitentiary. I don't have a job assignment as of now. Okay. Why? Because I, I recently just come from this facility and I'm in a transitional program. I come to this facility about two months ago. About I was, two months ago. Yeah, okay. I was in a quick release program. Okay. And I see you came from uh, you came from Richmond. I came from Richmond Parish. I went from Terrebonne, came from Terrebonne work release because of my health problem. I got hurt offshore. They shipped me to Richmond Parish. Richmond couldn't do too much for me, so they shipped me up up here to uh, Louisiana State Penitentiary. You spent some time at the Lake Hospital. Yes, sir. Okay. And how, how, how are you doing right now? How is the uh, medical situation? My, my medical condition improved a whole lot. I got my vision back. I had a stroke. I couldn't move on my left side. Now I'm able, by the grace of God, um, to be able to move my activity of my limbs on my left side. Okay. Tell me about your disciplinary uh, conduct. I don't have any disciplinary conduct since I've been incarcerated. And you've been incarcerated since 2022? No, since 2021. Since 2020, December 2020, they, and uh, they made a mistake and released me January 2022 for five days and they rearrested me. I tried to inform them that I had other charges but they, they didn't have any information. So I went and signed up for parole 
and I got okay. on parole. Okay, okay. Now, tell me about your transition plan. Where are you going to live? Where are you going to work? I'm working at my job that I left offshore that I got hurt on, B.J. Martin. I was a chef out there. My residential plan is at 6782 West Park Avenue, home in Louisiana. And what other vocational skills do you have? I'm a chef. Uh, I'm a mechanic. I'm a welder by trade, and I'm a carpenter. Why? Why was it necessary for you to uh, continuously be arrested for theft? Because I went through a bad divorce and I turned into a drinking problem. And I, uh, when I didn't have the money to pay for the beer, I was stealing. I'm just gonna be honest with you, but I, that's beyond me. Now. That's past me. Because while I was in the work release, I had the opportunity to go in stores and I didn't purchase beer or any alcohol when I went into stores. But your first arrest was in 2005 for manslaughter. What was that about? And manslaughter, uh, I, was, I was a driver of a vehicle and I wasn't aware of the, uh, the individuals that I gave a ride that had guns in the car. And we went through a neighborhood that started firing through the neighborhood, but I didn't report the crime that had happened. So when I went in front of the jury and group, uh, uh, the grand jury, they charged me with no accessory after the fact. But when okay. I went to court, the okay. DA upgraded. Oh, okay, okay. Now, you say you were trouble and you didn't, couldn't pay your bills. And you went to dealing other people's property, which you were arrested in 2011 at a West Baton Rouge uh, probation and parole. You were arrested three times in 2014, 2015, 2016, four times in 2017 five or six times in 2018, 2019, four or five. So basically, you've been arrested multiple times from 2011, 2021. Yes, sir. This was not because of a divorce or something. Tell me exactly what was going on. I went through a bad divorce in 2015, to, um, and I picked up a bad drinking problem. Uh, I didn't have any control over, over that, and I picked up a bad drinking problem. Okay. So, okay. Now, have you ever had a mental health evaluation? Yes, sir. And what was, and what was the results of that evaluation? I was diagnosed with uh, paranoid schizophrenic. Uh, depression and bipolar. Yeah, are you currently on medication? Yes, sir. I take my medicine twice a day. Okay. Are you compliant? Pardon me? Are you compliant? Do you take your medicine every day? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Every day, twice a day. Mr. Roche, mental health, uh, our mental health staff is here with him today. Okay. Right. So let me hear from the mental health staff. Uh, Mr. Arsman is currently housed in our transitional unit. Um, that unit is um, for our more severe uh, mentally ill offenders. Uh, he's been with us maybe for about a month now. Um, he has been placed on medication. Um, he does receive that medication twice uh, in a day through pill call. Um, he's seen our psychiatrist um, as needed. Um, like I said, he's only been here for about 30 days. Um, so far, his behavior, we haven't had any issues with Mr. Arsenic. Um, He's been pretty calm uh, and cooperative since he's been here. What is the average length of time when a patient comes in or an offender comes in 
and you uh, would classify him as stable. That actually is going to depend on the offender itself, depending on their mental state and the time it takes to get get them under control, depending on their behavior and things of that nature, um, as it pertains to their diagnosis. Typically, we'll keep someone in a program 30 days to 90 days. It could be longer. It just depends on that particular offender. And so I know initially Mr. Arsenault was actually um, brought to us in a medical at a medical state. So he left the nursing unit to come over to our transitional unit. Thank you, madam. I appreciate the information. It was very helpful. Warren, do you have any additional information? Um, he did do a victim accountability letter training when he was at the uh LaFouche Parish Jail, so uh, he did do that. Um, you know, I don't know if he went to TU because of his mental health state or that he wrote a letter here in his folder asking for protective custody because he felt that it had people out there trying to get him. So I don't know if that's a part of his paranoid schizophrenic or what, but he did write a letter to us asking that he be placed in uh, PC because there's a big hit out on him. Okay. Uh Ms. Chairman, anybody? Okay, does anybody in staff either, either, do either one of y'all have any input? The other two um, uh, social work staff? Oh, that's all mental health, uh, Mr. Kelsey. That's the mental health staff. Right now, I'm just there's there's three of them. I'm just asking if either one of them want to make a statement as well. I appreciate you know I didn't know if it, they all wanted to make a statement or not. No, you don't have to. I'm just asking. I, I think um, just piggybacking off of what the warden stated in regards to his diagnosis um, with him making the PC claim, I'm more than sure that it probably had something to do with his diagnosis. Sure. Uh, yeah, I would think, yeah, I'm sure. I, I'd absolutely, the paranoia is, is absolutely a problem. You, and the prognosis there, for what, you know, what do you feel like the prognosis there is for? Um, for him, I mean, is he someone you see long term in your transition uh, facility? Or? As as long as he's here and he is going to be in the program, yes. He also sees the the psychiatrist. We also have um, psych nurses as well. Um, you he, guys are giving medication twice a day, uh, significant amounts. I mean, what's uh, what what is he receiving? I'm not really sure all of his meds. I'm, Mr. Arsament will know all of his exact medications that he's receiving. Um, Mr. Arsament, do you know yes, some of the meds that you're taking? Yes, ma'am. I'm taking Seroquel for depression and Depakote for paranoid schizophrenic. Huh. Good. Okay, good. Great. Thank you. I have a question for Ms. Renato. Uh, Mr. Arsament, when... Do you you seem to be very familiar with your diagnosis. When were you first diagnosed with mental I was, health? I was, I was first diagnosed with mental health problems when I was seven years old. So you lived with this most of your life. Yes, ma'am. And so you you were you were able to go to work for at least for a little while. I mean, you, what was the nature of your injury? Um, I was working offshore as a chef, and on my off time, I was pressure washing. A canopy, and I slipped off the canopy, and my safety harness didn't hold me, and I fell and hit my head um, huh. on a grating, and I went into a mild stroke, oh, and I started catching seizures after that bad. Oh, I'm glad to know that you did that. Yes, ma'am. So um, you feel like you're getting good care where you're at? Yes, ma'am. I'm getting taken care of uh, uh, pretty good. Um, um, I can't complain. There's nothing um, um, bad I can say about the program. Um, it, ha it has helped me a whole lot. Glad to hear. Now, I wanted to, uh, so what about your protective custody? You still feel the need for that? No, ma'am. I, I, when I first come here, I, you know, I, I didn't have much time. And I've seen a lot of people here had a lot of time. So I was somewhat afraid uh, to be around people with that much time. 
your, your uh, whenever you're released, your transition plan would be to go with, with your sister? Um, my, my sister staying in my apartment until I uh, be released. She have my truck in uh, my apartment until I'm released. And before you got there to the penitentiary of Angola, uh, what, on mental health medication, like even when you were in work release? Yes, ma'am. While I was on work release, I was still uh, following up on my mental health medication. So you've always been compliant. You've always taken it like you're supposed to. Yes, ma'am. I always take it like I'm supposed to, yeah. Um, all right, so that's all I have. Would you like to make a statement on your behalf? Yes, sir. Um, so far as my addiction with the, um, the alcohol, I'm um, um, past, um, past that. I had a moment, you know, to take out in life for myself and look, from, look at uh, where I came from and where I'm at now and where I'm proceeding to go. You know, while I was in the work release um, in Terrebonne, Paris last August, um, I was laying back and, you know, I was just looking at nature, how Hurricane Ida uh, de devastated our parish. And, you know, I asked God, I said, what could I do to help somebody? And he spoke to me, he said, our children need love. And so I took it up on myself and donated $4,300 in school supplies for five schools in Terrebonne Parish. And, um, uh, in November of last year, I donated to, uh, 200 turkeys to Second Harvest Ministry. Um, I, I look at life now through the eyes of God, you know, and that's love. You know, our children are hurting. They're going to school hurting from some things that's happening at home. They're afraid to talk about it. And our teachers, you know, they're not getting the welcome that they need and the, the, the accommodation that they need because they really take care of our children. And our children need to feel the love um, um, coming from um, our leaders. Okay, all right, thank you so much. Thank you for your comment. All right, Pal, prepare to vote. Mr. Sure. Um, this argument based upon your extensive criminal history, you are fifth felony offender, opposition from law enforcement, opposition from the DA's office, a high risk assessment, and a medium needs assessment. My decision today is to revoke, I'm sorry, to deny your supervision. All right, Ms. Renat. Mr. Arsene, uh, I think you're doing well at the at the TU, I think you benefit from continued treatment prior to your release. Um, as Mr. Roche indicated, you have a high risk assessment score. So my vote today, because I want you to be sure you're ready, my vote today is to deny your parole, but I would add when you're released on your good time, a special condition mm -hmm. that you do follow whatever aftercare treatment plan is set forth by those folks that have uh, in goal. And uh, connect with a mental health professional in your home. And I vote to deny your parole. We're for the same reason, State. I think you're in a good place right now. You look like you're, you're moving forward and doing well. I'd like to see you continue that. So, three votes to deny. Today, your parole's been denied. Good luck to you. Okay. And then we'll adjourn at 9 23. Yeah. So I guess let's unpack that. One thing that really stuck out to me as a wow was that he donated $4,333 to the local schools. That's just something that we have never heard anyone do. That's a lot of money for, um, just a lot of money in general. And the board just didn't seem to acknowledge it or recognize it. It kind of just like whoosh, went over their head and either because they're not listening or because they don't have a way to verify if it's true, but, it, but and either way you should acknowledge it and say, wow, that's really great of you. Thank you for doing that. Just, I mean, whether it's true or not, just say that. But it's like, the only thing I can think of is that they just had turned off their listening ears and they didn't hear a thing he said. You've seen them do that. I mean, 
to put things into perspective, today alone, I think they had like 16 or 17 hearings and are back to back to back to back. And they just, you know, it's just like a machine. It just churns through. Um, and I'm, I'm sitting here watching and I'll, I'll miss things. This is actually the second time I'm watching it. And frankly, I missed the first, I missed the first time when he spoke about the donation. So, you know, in that sense, maybe that's what happened. I think that they denied him, uh, because of his situation being a paranoid schizophrenic, um, really I'm limited, my understanding of that disease is really limited to the comment section. Uh, when when I see so many of you write experiences, either personal experiences or having relatives with it, and basically understanding that it is a, um, a incredibly serious, serious disease that has to be monitored, um, I, I kind of at the level a prison would, making sure, because if you just don't take your medication and you go off on this thing, and that's when dangerous things can happen. And he doesn't exactly have the best, you know, it's not like the parole project is with him. It's like, what, he's going back to his sister. So like, who's gonna, you know, and, and they're like, oh, but you've been on your medication your whole life. Yeah, yeah, I've been on that. I've been diagnosed since eight, but, you look at then the history of his life and his drive by like it's funny they're talking about all of these little things that he's done and then they like nonchalantly bring up and in 2005 you had the manslaughter charge <laughs> it was, now apparently it was dropped i did do some googling i found drive by manslaughter charges around the same date with the same last name maybe it was his brother but not his name and it seemed like a case that they ended up dropping for across everyone. They could improve it. I, I don't know. Um, but they, 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 they kind of killed the conversation. So I'm wondering if he served state witness and that's why they stopped it. Uh, they didn't want him to publicly say that. I don't know. And then you hear about how he was on work release and work release is a great place to be. You can make a lot of money. You can make up, put away a lot of money. It sounds like he did. I mean, he, his, his sister's living in his apartment with his truck. He donated $4,000. I mean, it's, if you could do that for a long time, but then he um, looked like he was doing like a side hustle and then he fell, banged his head uh probably had a led to some type of blood clot um and then resulted in a seizure so scary how that can happen it can happen like how many times we bang our heads um and it led to not a seizure to a stroke that's pretty incredible so yeah life can change in an instant Anyways, I mean, I, 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 I do wonder, like, it's probably, again, it's about, about, it's just easier to deny um, and just kick the ball down the road and wait for his good time date, which will get out. Um, you might argue, what's the difference? Let him out now. Like, what's the difference? His good time date or is not his good time date? That nothing's going to change. And I think that's a good argument. I think the only th difference is that they just don't want to release him and have it come back to them. So in this case, it's just easier to deny him. That's the only thing I can think of because, I mean, he'll only be older by his release date. Maybe they're thinking about that, but yeah, I don't know. Love to hear your thoughts on this. With that, I'll let you go.